Once again, TNN's cameras and correspondents converge on a capital cover-up to bring you a special report. All eyes turn to Washington, D.C., where rumor and scandal take center stage in the nation's political arena. Now, from TNN headquarters in Savannah, here is anchorman Chip Chapworth. With us, too, for TNN is a man whose beat has included the invasions of Grenada, Panama, and Kuwait, the Berlin Wall coming down, and the Columbia Space Shuttle going up. To give us his insights on the hearings in Washington, here is TNN senior correspondent Clay Fielder. Chip. Clay, you've covered Watergate, the ongoing Iran-Contra and Iraqi flaps, the Agnew mess, the McCarthy hearings, the Pentagon payoffs, the Novziger and Deaver trials, the Reagan court testimony, the HUD, SNL, and BCCI scandals, the Navy's tailhook sex scandal, Tower, Mies, Wright, Wettek, Bork, Bitburg, Ginsburg, and Weinberger, the Keating Five, the house check bouncing and post office affair, the Clarence Thomas, Anita Hill, Long John Dong, and pubic coke can testimony. Your reactions so far, Clay, and just the way you see them. Jake, the committee is zooming quicker than expected. Thank you, Mary, and thank you, Clay. And now it's back to the hearing room and Senator Bowman and the committee's next witness. Yeah, good morning, Mr. Butler. Good morning. As you know, I'm Chief General Counsel for the Combined Select Permanent Committee. And in that role, you and I have spent many, many hours in earlier preliminary hearings during which you were interrogated by staff members of the members of this committee and subsequently sub-questioned by sub-staff members of the Permanent Committee's Temporary Subcommittee. I believe I know that, yes, sir. None of my questions, therefore, should come as any great surprise. No, sir. Nor any of your answers. I can only hope. Mr. Butler, you were, during the period of time in question, employed by the Department of Justice, were you not? Yes, sir. Would I also be correct in saying that that position which you held is one that you no longer do? Yes, you would, in that no, I don't. You were dismissed by the Justice Department. I am on a permanent leave of absence, yes, sir. Well, you were fired. <laughs> so what you're saying? It's my guess that I am, yes, sir. And prior to that occurrence, can you tell us what your title was during the series of past events, the accumulative effect of which lead us up to the present time? I was, in respect to answering that question, acting as assistant to the acting assistant deputy attorney general. And in respect to that capacity, I ask you to direct your remarks to a meeting that took place in the assistant attorney general's office on the afternoon of February 25th. That would be immediately following the 24th? To the day, yes, for the purpose of specificity, I refer you to page 285, binder B, section 7, subparagraph 6. Big A, little d. Which contains your name as being listed among one of those who attended that particular meeting. I see my name, yes, sir. We can therefore assume that you attended. Not necessarily, sir. Mr. Butler. Either you did or you didn't. Or I didn't, though I did. Uh, Mr. Hunter, if I could perhaps help to avoid a respondatorial redundancy. Uh, although Mr. Butler's name does, without question, appear in the meeting's minutes, he did not, in fact, spend one minute in the meeting. Mr. Butler, can you tell the committee how you happened to be there in as much as you weren't? Yes, sir. Due to the ongoing upheaval men of justice during that period, a great many of us in the department had to be a great many different places very often at the same time. I was unable to attend the meeting that took place during the period of your question, since by then I was assigned to overlook the work of Assistant Attorney General Cleaver, who suddenly found himself out of the loop during that particular time frame. On the day of the meeting? If that's what I said, yes. Doing what exactly was the Assistant Attorney General doing? Can you tell us? I believe I'm about to tell you that, yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Cleaver was giving testimony that day. And the Assistant Attorney General was giving testimony regarding what exactly was he? Regarding the special prosecutor's efforts to indict the acting Attorney General for conflict of interest in pardoning the former Attorney General, who was convicted of conspiracy charges he had inadvertently filed against himself, but which later proved to be quite damaging. 